Hey, let's talk about references and values. All right. So if we think back to primitive types, and I wrote something like int x equals 7, here's my code. What's happening in the computer is I get a little block of memory that gets labeled x, actually gets registered under some other ID, doesn't matter to us, and in that block goes the number 7. Now, let's say instead we're making a person, all right, and a person uh, P equals a new person with two pieces of information. A name, so we'll call him Dan, and an age, we'll call him 10. All right. Well, a few different things are happening here. First of all is we're still making a reference, so we still get a little block, and it still gets labeled P. But then we have this word new. And the word new is going to make a big block of memory for us because objects have more information embedded in them. I can't fit Dan and 10 into this block. So new says make enough room for a person and put Dan in there and put 10 in there. So now P equals this memory location. So imagine like an arrow pointing over. But what happens if I made another person? How about person, uh, let's call him P2. Well, let's give it a different name. How about if we call him copy equals P. All right. So now I have another block called copy, which equals P, which means it equals the same memory location. So it's also pointing up here to Dan. Well, when we start working with our persons and we start asking them to do things, so for instance, if we say P dot get age, and we'll print this, print p dot get age, what's really happening is we're saying p dot, the dot dereferences it. So it takes us from talking about this reference to talking about Dan, get age. So I'm actually asking this, the person, for its age, and I print that. I end up getting 10. So what happens if we start playing around with these references, though? For instance, if I say to print uh, P, just like that, I don't print Dan, I print this reference. So by default, I'm going to get like, a memory location. It's actually a hash of memory location. But I'm going to get this information, not that information. What if we started fiddling around with these references again? What if I were to say something like uh, P equals a new person? Uh, John, who is 18. Well, I made a new person, so I got a block down here. John, 18, and I just changed this reference P to point to it. So now that's the state of our program. Now where this starts to get a little goofy is when we start talking about methods. So. Imagine all this is still in our main program, but now we are going to call uh, a method that modifies things. So here's our method. It'll be uh, modify person x. All right. And we're going to experiment a little bit. So this is in the main, and this is another me method written somewhere else. So let's say... So modify P. Oh, and we're back to we're back to this. Okay. So let's say I say modify P, and in here we say uh, X equals new person John who is 18. All right. Well, what happens in this case? So let's go down to program. We made P, made Dan, made a copy that goes over here. We say modify P. Now, when I call this method, I make a copy of the parameter, which means there is now a new thing called X, which is a copy of P, which means it points to that same place. 
In here, when I say x equals new person, John 18, this goes away and points to John 18. Well, when that method's over, P has never changed. Nothing happened to it. Now, the reason for that is because in Java, everything is passed by value, meaning that every time I send information to a method, it makes a copy of it. Just like if instead of modifying person x, if I said, give me person x and an integer y, and y equals uh, 17, and I say modify p, comma, x, this number up here, I make a copy of it. So over here I had 7, I make a copy called y that equals 7, and then in here I change it to 17, but guess what? That never changed because I just made a local copy. As soon as this method is done being executed, this goes away and this goes away. Now notice John 18 is still there though because when we said make a new spot in memory, we made room for it. What if we were to do something like this? Here's where it gets kind of goofy. Let's go back to how we had this set up before. What if we were say, uh, you know, p dot add a friend. So let's say all people had friends. Uh, and right now p doesn't have one, but there's a spot in here for friends. And John has a spot for friends, but he doesn't have one. Nobody has friends by default until you make one. So what if I said p dot add friend? Well, if there was an add friend method that said take this in, then here's my friend would point down to here now. So I'm making that new person, I can refer to it, and now when I leave the method, this thing is connected to my program. So when we talk about references, we're talking about these blocks that have arrows pointing to somewhere in memory. When we talk about dereferencing, we're talking about following the arrow and work with the actual instance, the actual person. Uh, obviously, this can get a little complicated and get a little messy, so we're going to spend a lot of time, pr pretty much a whole year, dealing with this issue. But this should hopefully be a first step into understanding the difference between, between references and values. Bye now.